You can't train to do something like this because it's, what do you do? What, what, what else is there in the world where you have to sit for an hour and 40 or nearly two hours and if you make a slight mistake, you're gonna die? Where, what else can you do to train that? It's, it's impossible. There's nowhere else like it in the world. Even, even if you ignore the TT, the racing over here, you know, it's, it's just a beautiful place to live. You know, there's low crime rate. Everyone's really friendly, you know, people look you in the eye, people talk to you, they stop and say hello. You know, it's uh, one of the best places to live in the, in the world. Biggest race in the world, isn't it? In our little bubble, this is the the pinnacle. You want to win the TT. You come here and the feeling of freedom and adrenaline, and and then you go to a short circuit, and it's just like you do ten laps and you're bored riding around. It is what it is. It's the biggest road race. That's I don't know. It's it's just a heritage. That's really what it is. So you know, it's obviously this is the place you want to win. That's where you want to come and win. So up to the big challenges. I've won the North West and won the Ulster Grand Prix and things like that, but you need to win a TT, yeah? I want to win a TT. You know, when you're here, your, your heart's pounding, uh, you're anxious, the guys go down Bray Hill, and of course it's got much easier now with live timing to follow them to the sectors, so you're aware that your guy's reached Glen Hill and he's reached Balloff, he's reached Ramsey. And this is important for the team, but when the guys let the clutch out, their nerves have gone. As soon as they go down Bray Hill, they're not nervous. They're just loving life and, of course, you know, enjoying the Isle of Man circuit. I think that's what's great about this place is it's, it is always a challenge. It's, it's a challenge getting here, let alone do it, you know, being successful at it. So I, I'm, not, I'm not losing the desire to keep, to keep going. It's never a, never a done deal, you know. It's not over till it's over, so that's, like Ben says, it's what's so, uh, what keep bringing you back about this place, you know, because you know you're never actually king of the hill, you know. You need to keep working at it. I don't know how they do it. They're just so fast now, and you think they're doing it on under, under 17 minutes now to go around 37 miles. It's... It's fantastic. The, the skill they must have is unbelievable. Travelling about 200 mile an hour in places. And 17 minutes is nothing, is it? They go 37 miles. The, the lap times come when you don't when you're not when you don't even think you're going fast. Around here, it's all smooth. Short circuit racing. You can go there. You can rush into things. You can learn the track because there's plenty of there's plenty of margin for error on a short circuit. You know, there's plenty of runoff. Where here, you have to be careful. You have to learn it. You have to do your homework. When you're not here, when you're doing your other, your other world championship commitments uh, throughout the year, but you're always thinking about TT, you know, we're talking about it or laughing about it, you know, it's uh, it gets inside you, I suppose. But you, you never stop learning either, you know. Every lap you do, you learn something new, and you have to be willing to learn something new. I think you have to keep taking it in, not never ever be complacent with it. I think, yeah, I know now, because you don't. <laughs> There's always something different. You've got to really treat this place with respect, you know, and. If you do, the rewards are massive. You know, the rewards are huge here if you treat this place with respect. You can't come here thinking that you're just going to shut the visor and go and do a 120 mile an hour lap. It just doesn't happen like that. You know, it's every single lap, something's different. Every single lap, something changes. You know, you're constantly learning, constantly learning here. And I'll tell you, people who have been doing it 
10, 15 years, they're still learning every lap as well. Every time it changes, every year, something gets smoother, something gets rougher. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's a great place, but it can be cruel as well. Uh, every year we say, well, they can't get any faster than this, but every year there's two or three seconds off a lap record and things like that. And I can remember not many years ago when they were talking about getting under 20 minutes and now we're going under 17 minutes. And it's, it is phenomenal. The, the, the skill they had out there is, is unbelievable. It is, it's fantastic. It's, it's part of the Isle of Man and it's the people that live here are so passionate about it and you know the kids are educated in it, they bring them around, the, the scouts do the scoreboards when you know it's, it's an integral part of their lives and that's great because it, it lets people compete here and the next generation that will come through from us, they, you know, they'll get to enjoy it and do it too. This is tradition, this is part of the Isle of Man. The Isle of Man still has steam trains, we're still using that, we've not upgraded to electric trains, so why should we upgrade the, mo uh, the scoreboards for modern board? I think it should definitely stay traditional because it keeps children in doing something off of their devices, off of the TV, and they're outside and they're having fun and they're experiencing something so unique. It is the only board of its kind in the world. I think it's amazing because in, in this day and age, everything's technology, isn't it? Camera phones and people don't look at anything anymore, don't they? They look at they're, they're at something really exciting, yeah. And they're standing there looking at their phone at the thing that's in front. Well, they might as well not be there. They might as well get their mate to record it and watch their video because that's all they're going to do. But then you come here and there's scouts on the number board putting on a slate tile with a white paint brush. It's been like that from day dot. Time moves on and it's probably better to keep in with the modern day. However, that's not what the Isle of Man's about and that's not what the TT is about. You look around, I mean, we've got the scoreboards, we are a road race, we do close the roads, people are locked in their houses or in their villages and that's how we do it. And We've never really been an island full on with the technology. I mean, we've still got water wheels providing to some parts of the island and we've still got the steam trains. That is tradition of the TT. It's been there since year dot, so I think it should remain there. You've got, to, you've got to have tradition. You don't have to go all modern. I mean, the bikes are getting modern, fair enough. But I think you've got to have a bit of nostalgia there because that's, that's all part and parcel of it. It's funny when, when you see ex-racers, that's the first thing they always say, they're like, oh, I don't miss this bit. I miss riding the bike, but not the, not the 10 minutes before, five minutes before. When you let the clutch out, it's fine. It's just you on the bike, faster, faster, and precision, and just everything, all the feeling, and yeah, that's, that's it, nothing else. But before, it's a horrible feeling. Quite scary. <laughs> it's just that's part of my job. You know, I have to know where I'm on the circuit so I can keep low out of the wind, so we get you know as much speed out of the bike as we can. So I have to know little bumps or you know listen to Ben's big gear changes that kind of thing, so I know when to move and around the bike. It's just knowing it in a different way to Ben. You know, he's looking all the time and knows every inch of the course. I only know what I need to know really. Each guy's different. You know, you have some guys that are really, uh, what's the word? And you have other guys that will laugh and joke because they slip the helmet on. It's each individual is different. As soon as you put your helmet on, it's, there's nothing around, nothing. If there was a stone wall in front of me on the start line, you would ride through it, and that's what it's like. You just blank everything out. 
and obviously your adrenaline's right up and as soon as they tap you on the shoulder there, you're gone and nothing's going to stop you. I, I look at him and I think, God, how many people has he touched and he's the last person that's touched them. I wonder does he think about that? Do you know what I mean? I wonder does he think, oh, I was the last person to touch him. It's crazy, yeah? But, that's life. No, I don't. I don't think about it. You know, it's funny. I, it just doesn't. I don't think about it. And I say, I, I might probably train yourself not to bother about it. Really, you know. I mean, people ask you, you know, how do you feel? You're the last person to touch them. You know, and then anything could happen to them. I said, you just don't think about it. You know, so I don't. <laughs> Motorsport of any kind is dangerous, isn't it? You know, that's why. That's why we like it. That's why people like watching it. It's. Uh, you, you drive as safely as possible, but things can happen, mechanical failures can happen, or mistakes can be made, same as anything. It's dangerous crossing a road. <laughs> That's just life. Yeah, you know, the guys, they have the choice. They, you know, hey, Padgett, please will you take me to race on the Isle of Man on your bikes? And, uh, you know, it's a little bit of, uh, what's the word? Uh, yeah, the guys want to come. There is no question. If we didn't come with them, they come with someone else. Nobody rides out of their limit, but you have accidents. This time last year, I was in Nobles Hospital with three broken vertebrae, a broken tailbone, broken hands, face, brain was bleeding. So we're better off than last year, aren't we? But I'm still back here trying to win one. <laughs> Why? We're never going to be rich. It's not even anything to do with that. It's just a... Uh, the love of it, the, I suppose when you set, set something off in your head that you want to achieve and you're hungry, that's what, that's what happens. When we have a race like today, the Superstock race, and it was fast, the conditions were great, and our radios didn't go off once, there wasn't a single incident all day long. And I'm sat there and I was like, I want to go racing again. But it doesn't take long before we get a call and we're going out to see an accident and see people in a bad way. And, it's enough to just sort of keep you on this side of it. And I was involved with the sidecar crew, a sidecar, and unfortunately he was, uh, you know, at a fatal on the course, plus his passenger. And I'm used to go up to the manor pub, you know, have a night time, and I'd have a drink and a chat to them. Uh, and the, the, the night after he was killed, uh, his crew came up and asked me to come up for a drink with them. That was a bit of the tough side. It's racing, isn't it? That's the thing. But, um, as I say, you just can't afford to uh, think about those things. It doesn't do to get too involved with them anyway. We know the majority of the riders, so if we do have to go to an incident and they see us, they know we're not going to, you know, fill them full of lies, basically. We will tell them how it is. If they're asking, are they OK? Yeah, you're OK. You're going to be OK, you know. Um, it's just a face they know, so it's, it just makes them settled. You know, the concentration that you need to, to set off here and to start here, you, you put yourself in a place where you need to be, and once that helmet's gone on, you know that's like the, the final the final thing, the, the last turn of the key that puts puts you in that place and knowing that that is 100% with you and, and it's the right thing to have, that's that's great, that's really important. You've, you've got to have the best of gear, you know, you can't go out there and do what we do, riding on the road, you've got to have the best of gear, you know, you've got to give yourself every chance of, you know, you do have an accident, so our eye is the best helmet out there to be honest and I think it has been for a long long time. It's, you know what I mean I've wore Irish for years you know what I mean so it's, it's the only job it's the only job for mine you know what I mean they do they've got a great service they look after as well and the helmets always looked after meticulously and, and I've never, never any ball you know they're very very the best best in the job so you, what more do you want to wear, <laughs> wear the best best for my job you need to have the for everybody's job you need to have a, the proper gear on 
the boys at RA look after me well, they custom fit my helmet and yeah, we're ready to go and they do a fantastic job. Here the vision is so important, like the evening practices, uh, the different options for visors, the different tints, they re work really well, really well, because the sun's in and out, in and out, and can be really quite dangerous, but you always get great vision with that, and also the tear-off system, you know, the flies can be so bad here, so it's really important to have a, a good tear-off system, and it just works, you can just rely on it and, you know, be comfortable to wear it. To be honest, if you hit something hard enough, nothing's going to save you, but in this sport, it's there's a good chance that's going to happen, but if it doesn't, you want to have the best, the best kit on. I had two youngish kids when I was racing, and I used to, well, I had a letter of my daughter. She wrote to me asking me not to race and things like that, but like I say, it's a selfish sport and we just get on and do what we do really, you know, riding the bikes, is, it's in your blood and it's, it's something you can't get rid of. Um, yeah, I'm over 60, <laughs> I'm not saying any more than that, otherwise I'll get, I might get, I'm P13, <laughs> but uh, yeah, and I really enjoy it, it's good fun. And I get a letter from the ACU in January each year asking me will I do the job and that just gives you such a lift, you know, and then you've got something to look forward to the end of May, it's great. Um, it's almost, not fair to say it's tradition, but you know, personally I'm obsessed with it. I love the place. It's 349 days to next year's Isle of Man TT, by the way. <laughs> tell you what we'll be doing in 15 years' time is in the edge of bottom, having a beer together, watching the bikes go by. <laughs> Telling everybody how fast we yeah. used to be. <laughs> I'm hoping that the TT will still be pretty much how it is today. Traditional scoreboards, traditional way of doing things. I'm hoping it will still be the same. Uh, with the likes of me, I have no idea. Hopefully I will have passed my maths GCSE. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where I will personally be. Maybe a marshal on the course, maybe a leader for the younger scouts. I don't know, but I just want to make sure that the TT is still the same in 10 years' time. I think. Um... I think that's a big, a big thing, especially in sport, not getting sucked into not making the most of life. Yeah, that's my biggest fear in life, not, not doing as much as you could and being old and regretting not, not doing enough. You live life to your fullest, I guess. You have to live life to your fullest, but at the same time, you don't want to waste life. I know people say, live fast, die young, but that's, that's no way to live. <laughs> you know, life is there to live, and if you're living fast, you want to carry, carry that on. You speak to any racer, they live for winning. And when they're winning, they want that to carry on forever. You know, it's just how it is. <laughs> People get killed crossing the road and they never get any excitement out of it. You know what I mean? The, the life I've had to be 28 year old is unbelievable. I've been all over the world and ridden motorbikes all over the world and met people I'd never ever have met if I never rid a motorbike. So I'm winning, I think. <laughs>